Okay, okay. It's time to have a walkthrough of the email outq command uh, and CL program. This is a blog that I wrote a couple of years ago, um, which in turn was an update of another blog from a few years before then, which has uh, a command front end. And that command then calls this CL program. And it works good, as far as I'm aware. It's at least three years ago I wrote this. Um, it reads... Uh, it dumps the contents of an output queue to a user space, then reads through the user space, and as it finds each spool file on the output queue, converts it to a PDF and emails it to the email address that you've fed in using the command. Simple stuff, um, and it was a good example of knocking something together quickly in CL. However, this variable you can see here, <clears throat> I hope I'm recording, called dqus underscore name, is a 20 character field. Now, I was very lazy in that I just defined that as 20 character. It's UPD underscore UDTA blank blank QTemp. Positions one to 10 are the object name. Positions 11 to 20 are the library name. Um, and I've had a few people, well, two people, well, I take it back, one person who's commented twice saying that it gives them an error when they copy and paste. And I said, hey, it's a user space. These are the positions you have to do it. And so Sierra has come back saying, oh, it still doesn't work. What's going on? Do I have to change something at position one and QTemp to make this work? So I thought, well, here's a good opportunity to take the, the program as it is, paste it into a code editor, walk you through the code, because there's really nothing complicated in there, um, and turn it into a little CL lesson. And we'll make a small change to the code to break that field out into two values and glue it together. So let's do it. So I'll start off with uh, launching Rational Developer while we're doing this. Um, while that's launching in the background, the first thing I'm going to do is take the command source. So you'll be doing the same thing, I presume. So if we take the command source, if you're a complete fre ah, if you're a complete fresher in the IBM I programming world, command source is like a scripting language, just like CL where you write the command. You know, when you do a work spluff, that's the command, you can create a command. So we're gonna create a command called email out queue, and it's gonna pass in these parameters, uh, an out queue name, a qualified library name, um, a folder, and uh, also an email address, and a subject for the email address, how we want to attach the spool files that we're converting, whether they're PDF or text, whether we want to ignore held spool files, and whether we want to delete the spool files after emailing. It's all pretty simple stuff. Don't let it freak you out if you've never used it before. So I'm going to connect to Pub400. I'm using uh, RDI, but of course you could be using your code editor of choice. You could even just do this in SEU if it's all you've got. Um, but as you'll see, cutting and pasting in SEU is way more difficult than cutting and pasting in RDI. So, and I'll show you why, shall I? So I'm gonna open a source file called QCommandSource. And when I go to QCommandSource, I'm gonna create a new member. And I'm just gonna call this email out queue. And it's type command, and this is going to email an out queue. Who'd have guessed that's what it's gonna do. So my usual um, warning, as with all these videos, is that um, A, I'll be drinking out my new awesome coffee cup. <laughs> trying not to slurp um, and b rdi and my connection to pub 400 is always dreadfully slow <clears throat> so just get used to it um, right okay so here i am editing my command source i'm just going to paste in the stuff that i just copied now you'll notice straight away it's done two things this is one of the reasons i love rdi there are um all the different lines of code in here RDI has picked up this command format that I've taken from the blog and as it's pasting it, it's syntax checking it and spacing out and reforming it, reformatting it in a neat way. So ignoring all the crazy colors on the screen, you can already see that just looking at this command, even if you don't know anything about uh, commands, it kind of makes more sense. It breaks out the instructions and what the parameters are and the values of the parameters. But anyway, there's my command source pasted. There was nothing weird in there at all. So I'm going to save that and while that's saving I'm going to go back to my blog and I'm going to copy all of this CL so starting from the top oops my mouse is playing up 
I'm going to drag all the way down to the bottom. Now, of course, if you were pasting this in SEU, you're going to have to copy paste, copy paste a page at a time because SEU only does you know 20 lines at a time. Another huge bonus for RDI. Now, for RDI, I'm now going to go to my QCL LE source file. I'm going to create a member in here. I, some people will create the command and they'll create the CL with a different name. Um, I like to create the command and the CL with the same source name because they're, they're stored in two different source files. And when I compile them, they'll have the same name. So by default, if I create a command called Nicholas, I would write the CL for it called Nicholas, compile them both. You'll see a command object called Nicholas, a CL program called Nicholas, and they just call each other. But um, if you want to call it something different, do so. So I'm going to call this CL program, email out Q, the exact same as the command. Obviously, this um, I member type is CLLE. And this is do the uh, email out queue magic. Okay, so I'm gonna add this source member. Again, one of the nice benefits of using RDI, when I paste in the source code that I've just copied from the blog, that source code will be syntax checked, verified and tidy. So I'm gonna paste that here. Ding! You actually saw, if you were a bit eagle-eyed, you'd have seen it pasting it all in, you know, on the left-hand side. Then as RDI has taken it all, it's spaced everything out. Now, if I come down here and look at the, um, in fact, I can, RDI has shown me the errors immediately. I was assuming it was just this QDKUS name that needs the two blanks in there. But look here, when I've pasted it, that's only got one blank, that's an error. That's only got one blank, that's an error. That's only got one blank, that's an error. All of these 20 character fields, because that's the format that the APIs are expecting, must be object one to 10, library 11 to 20. Now, I could fix this really easily by just coming in and putting another space in there. Oops, I've got to press the insert key, not the non-lock. That's fixed. That's fixed. That's fixed. So this is now fixed. However, when I copy and paste this back into my blog, there's no guarantee that that copy and paste won't truncate out the values again. So let's actually put a little bit of code fixing. What I'm going to do for each one of these fields, I'm going to create, as this field is called, qcuz underscore name. I'm going to create a qcuz underscore f um, object and a qcuz underscore lib, for example. Um, and then we'll glue those together into the 20 character. So let's start off with that. Well, in fact, no, I take it back. Let's start off with running through the code as it stands. And I'll just talk you through it so you can figure out what's going on. And then we'll make these quick little code changes. Right. Here's our program statement. Um, these are a list of all of the parameters that are coming in. These have all got to match what's being sent in from the command source. Um, this is obviously a bug here. I think I've pasted an email out queue twice. It's got to say declare. I use the um, copyright statement to show a version. So I could say here email out queue um, email all spluffs from out queue and this is version one because I'm making a change to it I always start with version zero so what I do is I'm going to put in a modification history here to show that I'm making some changes fix 20 um, character fields to Ensure uh, blanks are not truncated. That'll do. I mentioned in one of my earlier blogs in CL programming that one of the techniques of closing off your um, comment lines is to do a plus sign. So obviously when I wrote this, I decided that was the way that I wanted to do it. Since then, I've got rid of that technique and I tend to standardize on this as a technique which I think is I think it just looks neater in the code. I'm sure there's a faster way of doing this than me copy and pasting like this, but <coughs> excuse me. Okay, we're at nine minutes. Let's do this. So here we are. Here's the program with our input. 
Here's our copyright statement. This is just something that's embedded in the object when we, complain, when we compile it. Here's all of our declarations where we're declaring all of the fields that are being used in our code. The declare statements go on and on and on and on and on. There are lots and lots of things being declared. None of that is magical science, so we can just leave them as they are. Then we get into the, st the start of the code. This is the start of the code here. So the very first thing it's doing is now populating some of these variables. So it's saying, right, change the variable called type. And what I want to do is take a substring of type positions two and three. So type that's come in contains asterisk PDF or asterisk TXT. And as the comment says, chop the asterisk from the front of the palm. So what this is saying is take the type file that's got asterisk PDF and starting at position two to position three, replace it with that value. So literally it just chops off that asterisk. And that's because that value is used later in the code. We're then saying take out Q, the out Q parameter that comes into the program is a 20 character long field, okay? Because it's always passed in in palms, object for the first 10 characters, library for the next 10 characters. So for some reason here in the code, it's saying, right, I wanna extract out the out Q and the out Q library. So it's taking the first 10 characters into out Q because out Q is 10 characters long and out Q palm is 20. When you say change out Q to the value of out Q palm, it just snips that first 10 characters. And then for the lib, we want to pick up the next 10 characters. So it says, right, again, substring from that parameter, starting at position 11, take 10 characters. Pretty obvious, right? It's then running the retrieve network attributes command to pull in the system name. Lots of different ways of doing that. And it's saying, right, let's construct the subject of the email. Change the subject to say whatever was already in subject, that's what we passed in through the palm, subject came in as a parameter. So let's say that you typed in, this is Bill's email. It's saying change the subject to read, this is Bill's email, then leave one blank space, a blank concatenate, and then put in um, whatever that weird character's called, a strike thing, I forget. Uh, system name, the system name that we've just retrieved, truncate and concatenate that means there's no blanks around it then out queue and the out queue name that we're processing so if we put in a value to pass in it would change it to say value to pass in for the subject space system name xyz out queue name xyz just so you can see in the subject exactly where that email is coming from okay the next little section that we're doing here is with this piece of code is saying Create a user space. This is a way of us to read through the, we, the technique we use to read through the output queue. So it says all these various things, right? Set up the details, call an IBM API. This is a brief walkthrough, so I'm not gonna go into detail on these. With all of the values that we've defined at the top and the ones we passed in, so this is gonna create a temporary um, user space in QTemp. And it's going to be called ampersand qcuz underscore name. And if I go to the top here, one of these values, ampersand qcuz name, you see they're all matching. So what we could do here is we could define one name and then have these extra fields overlaying each other in memory. So it's only defined once. But we'll loop back to that in a second. So once we've created the user space, we then list all of the spool files. Each of what, each of these statements is, is setting up the values to get the spool files, calling an IBM API, an IBM I API, to do the functions. So Q use our create US has created our user space. If there was an error, we go to our error logic routine. Then Q USL spool creates um, a list of all of the spool files within that user space. And if there's an error, it goes to the error handler. So we've now got already after those few lines of code, a user space listing all of the spool files in the output queue. Now we're gonna just read through that user space, kind of like reading a file. And as we hit each entry in the space, we're just gonna process each one because we've got the spool file details. So it grabs the, <clears throat> the header details from the user space. And the header details will tell you, right, this is where I live, this is how many lines I've got in me, and uh, this is how much stuff you've got to read, okay? 
then we come down to this loop section that says right starting from zero let's set the count to whatever it is plus one so zero so zero plus one is one so starting from the very first entry in the user space let's retrieve that user space entry if i was unable to retrieve this user space entry then loop out of our loop if i did find something i.e i'm a valid spool file Let's go and get the spool file attributes calling this API, QUSR spool A. Once I've found the attributes of the spool file, I'm then gonna extract from that string of data, the job name, the file name, the user, the job number, the spool number, and the status. And then we have our little bit of logic, right? Where we're saying, if ignore held was yes, that's one of our parameters that came in, and the status of this line is held, then loop back to the top and read the next one. If we've said ignore held ones and it's held, ignore it. If not, we'll continue. So then it picks up some spool file details, sets the name that it's gonna to write to the IFS because this is how this thing works. It then copies the spool into an IFS location as a PDF using the copy spluff command. So if you said I wanna copy it as a text file, it copies the spool file from the out queue using the information from the user space as a text into that stream file location, the IFS. Otherwise, it does it as a PDF into that location. So we're using the copy spool file to do the spool to PDF conversion for us. This was introduced, I think, in 7.2, I might be wrong, in the last two, three years anyway. Really nice, easy function. So that's it. It's looping around as it writes each spool file to that location in the IFS. It then runs the IBM I command send SMTP email. And it says, right, so send this email using the subject we constructed earlier, using the body that was passed in as a parameter and attach this thing that we just created in the IFS. So if we create a text thing, it will send a text thing. If we create a PDF thing, we'll send a PDF thing. And that's it, here's the error handling. If there were any CPF errors sending that, e that blah, any CPF errors sending that email, then stick a message out to the user going, "Oh, we couldn't send." Otherwise, everything was good. So move count plus one, and let's go on to the next one. So before doing that, it does a little bit of housekeeping where it sends a message out to the user just to say, "Hey, I've just emailed this spool file." It then looks at that delete parameter that we sent in. If the delete says yes, it actually deletes the spool file from the queue. And remove links means get rid of that um, IFS file that we just created with a copy spool file. If we didn't say to delete anything, then we just change the spool file to say, what are we saying here? We're saying change spool file, save no, and put some user data on there. So I guess the user data will say that it's been sent. Then loop back to the next one. So it's created the user space, it's reading through one by one, each one that it finds uses copy spool file to create an IFS object, uses send SMTP EMM to send that IFS object, then it does a little bit of housekeeping and tells the user what it's done. Loops around, loops around, loops around, loops around, until it either hits the end of that list or maybe encounters an error, in which case it drops out of this loop and does this end housekeeping in the program, which says, right, delete the user space and return. This next little section down here, like I showed in the earlier lesson, this is our error handling. If it bombs, it drops to this section, where basically it says, right, pick up the details of the error message from the message queue, that's this message ID and data, and stick it out to the user. So what that means is whatever the error was, suck it up, and stick it out to the user. We don't really care. We don't want to say, if it's authority, send a message about authority. If it's a lock, send a message about a lock. We want to say, whatever it was, just show that to the user. Let them fix it and try again. So that's it. It then sends an escape message. <laughs> Program crashes, poops and dies. So here's our screen. So now let's let's do a little... Let's, whenever I re revisit this code, there's always so many things that I would have done differently now to a few years ago. I wouldn't have had this do loop with go-tos. I would have done a for loop reading through with a counter. 
but um, I don't want to go into too much detail rewriting this. So uh, let's make the really, really obvious things change. So first of all, here's the QDQUUS. So I don't want to make this a 20 character field anymore. Um, I'm going to define two fields, press Control D, Control D, and I'll just call these um, data queue name and data queue library. I'm going to make them both character 10. So the data queue name will be UPDDDTA and the library will be QTemp. I haven't got to worry about putting trailing blanks on because whenever I define an initial value, it always glues those values on together. Um, so DQUS is defaulting with this name. So what I want to do is take that value off entirely. And my first line of code, I'm going to say change variable DQUS name. And I want to make that a value of DQ name. In fact, let's give it a standard, a better name. How about default name? Ooh. I don't know. I don't even know why it's got all of these underscore. In fact, I'm, I'm just the problem when you're watching a program, a program, they, they, you see their brain twisting all over the place. So I'm going to call this default um, user space name and default user space library. So I'm going to populate that DQUS name, making sure that it's all correct. Now, if I just say concatenate, it doesn't do anything with any blanks. It just puts them in. So what are we saying on here? We're saying take that value called ampersand QD US name and glue in the name first. So that will be up D underscore UDTA blank blank because it's 10 character and glue onto the side of that the library name which would be QTemp blank blank blank. If I'd use TCAT or BCAT it would mess this up. So that's me constructing construct the uh, 20 character API values for object and name. Oh, you can see, shockingly, what a terrible typer I am when I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, that's the first one done. So how about we do this one here as well? QRUS name. So we'll get rid of the value up there. Come down here. I can just press Control D in API and paste the field name in. Easy, right? Let's press Control D again. And let's put in this one, Q spluff name. And we can get rid of that one there. And last is the Q cuz name. We can get rid of that one there. And there are no more definitions defining that. A little bit of tidy up here. What else have we got going on here? That was making little blooping noises because this plus sign was stuck over on the right hand side. So I'm going to get rid of that. Even though I know it's me because this is my code, I'm going to put the date and time on there so people can see it when they're looking at the blog. Oops. So it's really clear that I updated it on May 7th, 2021 to fix the 20 character. Okay. Well, there we have it. So there's our default values. Just because I think it makes sense to my brain, <coughs> I'll move the defaults to the top. Oops. So there's our code. I'm now setting the defaults at the top. Um, those values that need to have the data queue name, the, the um, user space name in them, I'm populating here. And we've made those little code changes. So let's see if that works, shall we? So um, I'm saving my source code. 
let's use the good old fashioned um, pub 400 green screen sign on and try and send this uh, what is my pub 400 password here I am so if I do a work member PDM litten one Q command source there's my out queue so I'm going to compile this into litten one you notice that it's calling a program here so I'm just saying right call the program with the same name from the library list I'm good with that oh look email out queue compiled okay let's go to CLLE source there's my email out queue source look we can see it's the new version that I just entered let's try and compile that yes you know what happened I pressed F10 which stopped recording <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna press enter and see if this compiles please compile not created oh it's deadly what did I do wrong If I work with my spool files let's have a look at my compile listing and see what I did wrong in there I must have had a typo somewhere so if I just go to the bottom and I'll see exactly what it is oh I can show you something else that's pretty neat so okay well this is a showstopper for me on uh, pub 400 I'm not authorized to the uh, send SMTP EMM command Ooh, well that's a bummer um, for whatever reason pub 400 doesn't let you send emails from their system possibly because they don't want you to spam people using a public system so I am unable to compile this code but it will compile I promise you so why don't you copy the same code in um, and I'll come back to this video after I've compiled this somewhere else now with all the time travel advantages of being able to click pause and do things here I am on an entirely different system and I've just loaded on the command source and the CL source for the same two bits of code into my library called Nick so I'm going to compile the command into Nick Bing it works let's compile the CL into Nick okay here's the same CL code that I had let's compile this and that compiled as well right so let's see what it does shall we so what spool files have I got uh, if I look on I've actually got an output queue you guessed it called Nick with nothing on there so let me put a couple of spool files in there I'll take these two spools from those two compiles I've just done I put them into my personal output queue it is still recording so my output queue has two spool files so if I do an email out queue of Nick and give it my email address this could be anything you like actually we've got my why don't I put my Gmail email address oops so um, I could press F10 to look at the rest of the commands but that will stop recording so I'm not going to I'm just going to press enter and there we go so it's telling me that I've sent two emails to that email address with text formats um, and they've gone <laughs> yep pressed F10 again to look at the job log um, and here we are looking that I can actually see that statement 200 of that CL issued the SMTP EMM command this is what we look through you can see sure enough it's replaced in the in the input email address the subject is the subject that we constructed depending on the system name and the output queue name right the actual body is this HTML that was constructed within the CL um, and the attachment is saying go to a folder called temp and look for email from backbeat out queue nick file out blah 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 dot text which was my um, spool file being converted um, and email was sent successfully hurrah now if we have a look into that location in the IFS we shouldn't see any of these emails floating around because they've all been done a bit of tidy up here's a lot of other things in the temporary folder which hasn't been done tidy up but we know that ours has so I hope that's helped you understand some of the basics of CL 
uh, as you can see it's super powerful you may not understand that CL completely don't worry about it if you're just starting out um, it should have opened your eyes to realize some of the potential so go off and take the code and tweak it and see if you can make it better and submit me a better copy there's a challenge for you all right cheers